Now that we set up the main components of our HTTP server, it's time to discuss what we're actually building. I mentioned at the start of this course that we're going to be creating a CRUD app for storing a data type. CRUD, by the way, stands for Create, Read, Update, and Delete, and it's pretty much the basic four operations that we'll want to achieve when it comes to data management APIs. In our case, we're going to store customer order data for an online hypothetical store. This isn't anything too exciting, but there's some interesting caveats with microservices that I think it's worthwhile us diving into, and this data model will help expose them. For now, however, we need to actually define some routes and handlers for these four operations, and Chi has a really nice approach to do so. Before we do that, however, let's take some time to tidy up our application a little. Putting everything inside of a single main function is fine for something small, but it can be a little untidy after a while. To start, let's go ahead and create a new directory called application. I like to use this for anything related to the lifecycle of the app. Inside, let's create a new file called app.go. Next, open up this file and define it as being in the application package. Afterwards, let's define a new type called app, which is a struct. We'll use this type to store any of our application's dependencies, which at this stage will likely just be our router. Let's go ahead and add this in here, but we'll define it as an HTTP handler, which keeps it decoupled from Qi. Make sure to also import the net slash HTTP package as well. Next up, we can define a constructor for our application. We saw this pattern with Qi by using the new router function. For our case, let's just call our constructor new. We'll have this return a pointer to an instance of our app type. Inside of this function, let's create an instance of our app type and assign it to the app variable. Inside of the struct definition, let's assign the property router to the result of a function called load routes. That we'll define in a minute. Then we just want to return our application at the bottom of this function. Next, we want to define this load routes function in another file. In the application directory, let's create a routes.go file. This is a slight bit of personal preference, but I like to keep all of an API's routes in a single file, which makes it easier to see all of the supported paths provided by the API. First, open up this file and add the package application line to the top. Then add our imports of net slash HTTP and our go chi library. Next, we can define our load routes function, which will return a pointer to type of chi.mux. Inside of this function, create a new instance of a chi router, as we did before. Then add the middleware.logger using the router.use method. Next, we want to add a basic HTTP handler for the slash path. To do this, call the router.get method, with the first parameter being forward slash. And for the second parameter, use an anonymous function for the handler. Inside of this function, we'll call the write header method on our response writer and set the status to HTTP status OK. And last but not least, we return our router at the bottom of the function. Oh. One thing I forgot to do is import the middleware package into this file. So let's go ahead and do that. Heading back on over to our app.go file, let's now create a method for our app type called start. To do this in Go, you add the following line, which defines the receiver of this method. In our case, it's a pointer to the instance of app. You can think of a receiver as being the owner of the method. In JavaScript or C++, this would be similar to using the this keyword. We then add the name of the function, in this case, start and any parameters. We're going to specify a single parameter of context.context. .context. Don't worry too much about what this is now, we'll look at this in more detail shortly. Finally, let's set the return type of this function to return an error. Now we can add the implementation of this function. This is very similar to what we implemented in the main function before. First, define our HTTP server, and we'll add the same address value of port 3000. Next, let's set the server's handler to be our app's router. After that, let's call the familiar listen and serve on our server and capture the error. This time, however, if we do detect an error, what we're going to use is something called error wrapping. This is done in the string format by using the percent %w, which will wrap our error with another error around it. This allows us to provide more context to errors within Go. We then return this wrapped error. Finally, if everything works correctly, let's return nil for the success case. Once that's done, go ahead and save the file and we'll jump on over to our main.go. Oh, but before we do, make sure to import the context package as well. Inside of our main.go, the first thing we want to do is remove pretty much everything. So go ahead and delete what I'm deleting. All that should be left is the package name, the import of FMT, and an empty main function. Now that we have a clean slate, let's go ahead and import both the context and our application package that we just created. 
This import path uses the same GitHub URL that we defined for our Go mod earlier. However, we've also added the application path onto it. This resolves to the package inside of our application directory. Now back in our main function, we can create a new instance of our application using the constructor, which we assign to a variable called app. Next, we'll call our application start method to start our app. We need to pass in a context parameter here. For the moment, let's just use context.todo. This will signal to us that we need to implement this properly, and we'll come back to it shortly anyway. Finally, as this method returns an error, we need to make sure that we handle it. All we need to do at this stage is just print it to std out, so that we know something went wrong. With that done, we can save our file and jump over to another terminal window to test that everything is working as expected. Running go main go and sending a curl request to localhost 3000 shows that everything looks great. Now that our code is refactored, we can begin adding in our new CRUD routes and handlers. To do this, let's create a new directory in our project called handler. We're going to use this package to define our HTTP handlers, which will initially consist of five of them. Inside of this directory, create a new file called order.go. Open it up and add the following line to set the package name at the top. After that, import the fmt package and the net slash http package, which are the two dependencies we'll need in this file. Next, we're going to define our first handler type, which will be a struct called order. Let's leave this without any properties for the time being. Next, we're going to start adding in our different methods to perform our CRUD operations. Let's first add in a create method. As this is an HTTP handler, we'll need to set the typical HTTP.handler interface. We should be reasonably familiar with this now. Inside of this function, let's print to std out that the create method was called. The next method to add is a list method. We'll be using this one to return all of the elements that match a filter. This method, as with the rest of them, will also have the same HTTP interface. We'll also log inside this function that the list method was called. The next method we'll add is one called getById, which will return an order by its ID, an update method, which we'll use to update an order by its ID, and a delete method, which we'll use to remove orders by their ID. Each of these will have the same HTTP handler interface, and we'll also be logging out what the method was called. Pretty easy. Okay, with that done, let's head back over to our routes.go file in the application package. Here we're going to create some HTTP routes to hook into the handler methods we just created. The first thing we want to do is add a line to import the handler package into this file. Next, let's add a new function called load order routes, which takes a parameter of chi.router. Then add the following line, which will set up a subrouter for the slash orders path. The second parameter will be the function that we want to receive the subrouter. In our case, we're going to pass in the load order routes. That means the parameter that that function is receiving is our subrouter, and any routes that we assign to it will automatically have the slash orders prefix, which is pretty neat. This allows us to logically group up our routes and prevents anything like typos from causing a problem. After that, let's turn our attention to the load order routes function. Inside, let's create an instance of the order.handler. We'll make this a pointer by using the ampersand to take the memory address of the instance. Next, let's create five different HTTP methods to match the five CRUD methods we just created in the handler. For the handler's create method, we'll use the router.post function on the root path. For the handler's list function, we've added in a get method to the router for the slash orders path. Pretty standard at this point. Next, for the handler's get by ID method, our path actually contains a path parameter inside of it. This is noted by the ID field that is wrapped in braces. Chi will match this route, which will look like slash orders slash ID, and add the path parameter to our request so that we're able to pull it out. We've done the same thing for our update by ID method, which is called on the same path, but for an HTTP request that matches the put method, and the delete by ID, which is the same path that contains an order ID, but for the delete HTTP request method. All in all, our API paths and methods feel very resty, which is a good thing, in my opinion. We only have stub methods at the moment, but that should be good enough for us to test that everything is working as expected. Let's go ahead and jump back into our terminal again and rerun our application. If we send a post request to localhost 3000 slash orders, we can see in our logs that the create handler is called. Next, if we run a get request to slash orders, 
Again, we can see in our logs that the list handler is called. So far, everything is working as expected. What about if we want to send a request to one of our other three paths, though? Well, we can do that by using a dummy ID at this stage. Let's send a get request to slash orders slash my order. In this case, we're pretending that my order is the ID. We can see in the logs that our get by ID handler is hit, which means this is working. Very cool. If we do the same with an HTTP put request, then we can see that our update handler logs to std out. And last but not least, we can send a delete request to the same path and we'll see that our delete handler is called. Okay, so this is really nice. We've managed to stub out the methods that we want for our API. All that's left is to actually implement them one by one, which means it's now time to set up our data store. Let's go ahead and commit our code before doing so. 